I think it's important not to be a bystander and to have more education surrounding domestic violence and women's rights and sexual harassment in schools. And the more we just call it out and point it out, the more the behaviour is, is shown to be what it actually is, and that's offensive and, and, and not appropriate. One way we can call out and stop sexism is by reporting it to somebody who is higher in our workplace, for example, human resources, or if you're at school, a head teacher or a year leader. I think the only way we can stop sexism and harassment is by talking about it and not by staying quiet when it happens to us. The key thing for me is to spot that it's happening. So I think it's to develop an interest, first of all, in, in the topic, but then in everyday um, you know, meetings that you have and uh, you know, encounters with people, look for it and then make an internal decision to do something about it. In my opinion, to help stamp out sexism, more positive role models and education on relationship red flags is needed. It's basically what the, uh, the pledge is. If you see it, call it out, say about it, talk to the people that are doing it, try and encourage others as much as possible to prevent them from using the uh, everyday sexist language that is so common these days. I think that people should be educated on sexism and what it means for both men and women um, and those who don't identify. The same with harassment. People should learn about the long-term mental health side effects of harassment and sexism. Uh, well, I think it's an ongoing issue that no one should really go through. Well, we need to show that we set a very good example and when we have the chance to explain why we are White Ribbon Ambassadors. Another way we can call out and stop sexism is by challenging the person who has been sexist towards the other person and explaining why their behaviour is wrong. I think we just need to look at our own behaviours. Um, I mean, I'm getting on a bit and when I look at uh, how I was in the 1960s, these are sort of jokes and things that I would accept as, see as acceptable in those days and now totally no-go. Um, I think you need to look at yourself constantly, look at your behaviours, see what response you're getting from those around you, and actually be very careful that you're, at, that, that you're not actually saying things and doing things that are actually putting other people down, and particularly the women in our lives. We can call out sexist language and make sure not to be a bystander and actually stand up when we see things. Some people might say, well, it's just a bit of banter or a little bit of yeah. fun. And I think one of the important things about White Ribbon is it's about men saying uh, this is not okay. So it's about men standing up and saying no, those behaviours, uh, it's not a bit of fun because they create a culture which uh, belittles and objectifies women. I just think that it needs to be said more about in our education system. So when we have like, we should have like lessons or assemblies or just something where we talk about it. We can encourage all men and boys we know to make the white ribbon promise to never use, excuse or remain silent about men's violence against women.